how do you build links in an unsexy niche? That's what I'm gonna talk about today, um, and I'm gonna actually cover four different strategies that I go through uh, to ultimately help build a links to unsexy niches. As you know, I had a pest control site. I built links in an unsexy niche, so I think I have a couple things to say. And it was a question one of the members of my uh, my free Facebook group uh, brought up. Is like, how do you do it, right? And his specific question was related to plumbing. So I figured, why not just you know pull a plumbing site up and and basically give them free consulting, right? So quick interruption in your video. Um, if you really like this kind of content, me helping you build a blogging business and just kind of sharing all of my uh, you know my trade secrets and uh, my personal experiences from building blogs, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me uh, stay motivated to keep creating content uh, and helping you, and of course, uh, ultimately helping everybody else also build their blogs online. Yeah, so if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe, and back to your regular scheduled programming, thanks. Basically, I've already kind of uh, have a couple of ideas, and I just wanna go to my mind map here. Basically, I have four different sort of approaches. I'm gonna dive into each one. Um, the first one is gonna be using Howro, right? So the biggest question is like, how do I build links to an unsexy niche that ultimately people will, will want to link? And there's always a way to build links, right? It's just gotta get a little bit more creative um, to build links, right? So my idea basically is to use Haro to figure out what are people interested in? Like these are reporters, their job is to report things that are interesting right now, very, very current news oriented. So, and in general, gener uh, and in general, Current news is usually a better link building topic than something that's kind of evergreen because it's it's relevant. Editors want to link to recent stuff that will, their audience will care about, especially big publications, because um, it, it it's valuable to them, right? Like, because if, if it's a recent event, like especially COVID right now, um, what big websites actually want to cover that stuff. So if you're bringing a unique insight from a niche, say for example, plumbing, like if you're a plumbing site and you're like, you know, how COVID is affecting the plumbing industry, right? Maybe for a business. Uh, try to uh, go for a business link, or maybe how COVID uh, is affecting water, right? Can COVID travel through water? A plumber's opinion, right? Something like that is something, you gotta kind of think about the angle, right? So you kind of gotta put your PR hat on and be like, what are people interested in? And that's kind of what I'm thinking on the Harrow side. So what I would do is literally sign up for Harrow's uh, newsletter. It's free, by the way, and just kind of skim through and see if anything fits your niche. Like if you're, obviously they do a lot of stuff in the baby niche, in the uh, the finance niche, if if you are, um, you know, if I was a plumber site, I would just look for something that would make sense from a plumber for a plumbing site to create content around, right? So if I'm just kind of skimming this, I might see, you know, working remotely and staying connected. That doesn't make any sense. Um, what can a small business do to steer away from any crisis? Eh. Um, can I retire early? That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, I mean, you get the point though. I would go through this and see if there's anything that uh, makes sense to write about that people are looking for information about that ties into plumbing. So that's the first idea that I wanted to go through. The second is checking competitors. I mean, this is an obvious one. Um, you always check your competitors to see what they're doing uh, and kind of emulate and in, like have it as inspiration for your own content. So I did that um, for plumbing. Basically, I went to homeguide.com, but actually the first thing I did was I literally just typed in, um, you know, how much does plumbing cost, right? Just to see who's competing for plumbing keywords. And then I see various types of uh, you know websites here and I saw home guide. So I just pulled up home guide here and I just put them in uh, Ahrefs. I'll even redo it just so you can see exactly how I got to this page, but I'll put up home guide like that. So it'll pull up all the keywords related to this uh, related to this website. And what I'll do is go to their keywords because I want to see all the plumbing content on their site and see uh, what that looks like. So let's type in the word plum just to see that, and then there you go, right? So here, here we have it, and then you can see over here in the keyword difficulty, if you're not familiar with how Ahrefs works, basically keyword difficulty is a proxy for how hard it would rank uh, for certain keywords, and that number is derived from backlinks, right? So if there's a lot of links pointing to this site, that number generally goes up, right? So we can use it as a proxy to see how popular things are from a link building perspective, right? Are other pages getting links uh, related to this keyword, right? And you can see how much does a plumber cost is a, is a KD of 17. So you can see that that is a, a popular keyword that has a relatively high KD. Anything above 15 is usually kind of a good barometer. Um, we can keep going and see best plumbers near me. Okay, people are looking for plumbers. Uh, how much does a plumber cost per hour? Let's see what else, plumbers near me. 
We got cover cost per hour. So clearly people are interested in cost, right? So what it might, might want to do for a uh, plumbing site is do like the ultimate guide to uh, how much plumbing should cost for your house, right? And that piece of content could be really good fodder for any kind of home site. That would be really good link building bait for, for a money site, right? Finance, money, home. Um, those are all like they're all interested in the cost, the money sites, the home aspect, the home sites will be interested in. And if it's actually written by a plumber, you'll have that authority aspect that people will be interested in, right? That'll be kind of your hook. So when you're reaching out to other websites, you'd be like, hey, you know, I'm a um, I'm a certified plumber in the state of Virginia. I just uh, I just wrote up this awesome you know three thousand word guide, really trying to help people uh, you know create better you know make better plumbing decisions, right? Understand really what the total costs are for certain jobs, and that way they can ultimately you know not get over, you know overcharged when they're going to get plumbing jobs, right? For an expert plumber to write that up, it's going to do well. I know it's going to do well. I know other people will find that valuable, and then you can like supplement that with a video, perhaps, or or an infographic or other types of rich media that ultimately people will take and use on other sites, right? So it makes it really easy. So this is kind of how I would do that for an unsexy niche from a competitor's perspective. Now going back to my mind map here, I would also think about a health tie-in, right? So an example that I that I go through a lot is diatomaceous earth was a was a was a health topic. It was a bug is a bed bug powder, right? Diatomaceous earth, if you're not familiar, is a powder uh, that bugs when they crawl through it, they die, right? It's called through desiccation, basically dries out the exoskeleton pe pests have and it kills them. But the diatomaceous earth can also be used as a is like a you know like a stomach cleanser. You basically you eat it like with water and it'll clean you out. <laughs> you know, I don't know what they call that, but basically internal like cleaning system essentially. Uh, and then it's supposed to help with your, you know, your digestive and all that. So there's a health tie in there, but then also uh, there's a health tie in on the, on the, in the eating it part of it, but then also on the safety part of it, because what happens is most people misuse it. And then uh, you can, you can pitch websites, be like, Hey, you know, most people eat this stuff, but they also misuse it. So you got to make sure that you link to my article because I wrote up a big safety guide on it. So you get to see that you get to see like you uh, you, you can see how that pitch might be interesting for a, from an editor's perspective that they would link to it, right? You got to think in terms of what's going to benefit their audience, and it almost doesn't really matter what niche your website in is in as long as whatever you have benefits their audience. It's almost always going to be a win-win. Obviously, you're still not going to get links all the time, and you, know, you never will, but you you get the point, right? And then a money tie-in. This kind of goes back to the cost per hour. You can reach out to money sites with any kind of savings guide, like how to. Save save money for, uh, you know, expert plumber's guide, right? A plumber telling you how to save money plumbing, right? So you can see how that would be interesting from an expert, from a, from an editorial perspective, um, especially if the website you're reaching out to has like a plumbing column, right? That'll be a perfect link for you, perfect uh, piece of content for them. Everybody wins, you get a big backlink and your site starts growing and you make more traffic, right? So those are the big four things I wanted to cover. Um, if this stuff is interesting to you, please consider like and subscribe to the video. It really helps grow the channel and ultimately um, it keeps me motivated to keep creating good content for you. If you like this, again, like and subscribe, drop a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you later, bye.